Hey everyone, for today's video, I'm going to review the BenQ SW2700PT. This is an Adobe RGB monitor that I have been using for the last one year. So when I wanted to upgrade my monitor, I had um, two main choices, the BenQ versus the Dell UP2716D. So I chose this because it was cheaper by $100 and the specifications for this versus the Dell, which I have also reviewed, they are actually pretty similar. So this is cheaper and this comes with the hood. So obviously I went for this. So let's uh, take a look at some of the features that it has. I have just moved to a new location and my table is actually just beside the window. So there is a lot of light coming in. I could use the curtain to block off the light, but having the hood here provides that additional shade to just um, block off the light. And this is incredibly useful. I have just started to use this last year when I was at my other home. I did not deploy the shading hood, but now it is actually critical for me to deploy this because of the light from the window. So having the hood is incredibly useful. Um, you can detach the hood. It's actually very easy to set up. The hood comes in three or five pieces. So um, inside the hood, we have um, this coating. So this is velvet coating. It will just absorb all the light and this is just black. There's this little window here. So if you want to calibrate your monitor, you can put your calibrator through this little hole here and have your calibrator on the screen like this. This is a 27 inch IPS panel. The resolution on this is 1440p and that is quite a good resolution for a screen size like this. I can place all the user interface elements around the screen and still have ample working area to um, look at my videos or my photos while I'm editing them. I have edited over maybe hundreds of videos on this monitor and it's just um, so nice to work with a screen like this. A screen that is as large and as high resolution as this. I actually wanted to get the 4K monitor, the SW3200, but that was out of my budget, so I had to go for the 27 inch uh, option. It has all the basic adjustment. You can rotate, you can move the monitor up and down, and if you want to, if you need the monitor to be vertical, you can do so as well. But of course, the hood is going to uh, be on the side like this. This is a large and sturdy stand. It provides good stability for a heavy monitor like this. And here, this is the wired remote to control the manual. This is something that uh, Dell does not have. And this is actually quite useful, even though I do not use it as much. I only use this whenever I need to uh, recalibrate my monitor. The remote is very easy to use and there are directional arrows so you can go up, down, left, right to select options and change um, settings. It's very useful, very intuitive. Um, it's better to use this rather than those um, bottom buttons. Um, this is just more convenient. Speaking of settings, you can change things like brightness, contrast, obviously. You can also change sharpness, color temperature. You can change the gamma. I'm using a Mac, so I'm setting that as 2.2. And these are the various color gamut options. Adobe RGB, sRGB, uh, Rec 709, DCI P3. If you need to switch the monitor to a different color gamut, you can um, use these um, buttons here as well. So let's change it to black and white. And let's change it back to Adobe RGB. The other setting is sRGB. On the left side, we have two USB 3 ports. I've already used one for my wireless Bluetooth mouse. This is SD card reader. This is how the back of my monitor looks like. This is the stand. There is this carrying handle here for the stand. I run my cables through this hole here so that I can avoid seeing my cables on the table. You can also run your cables through this uh, hole here, but um, I try to keep them off the table, so I put them up here. It looks messy here, but when I turn the monitor around, it looks neat. This cable here goes um, to the white remote, which is down here. There are some measurements on the stand here. And this is an adjustable dial. 
So it, this can help you remember the position, uh, the high position that you want. I have just color calibrated my monitor yesterday with the Spider 5 Pro. And these are measurements that I got. 100% sRGB, 92% NTSC, and 98% Adobe RGB. So the color accuracy of this screen is very good. The graphics port available on this monitor are the DisplayPort 1.2. On the back is a full-size DisplayPort, and this is my personal DisplayPort cable. Let me just pull this up so that it's neater. When you get the monitor, they will provide you with all the graphics cables like the DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. I like to use my own because, well, I have it. And the other port is HDMI 1.4, and the last one, the third one, is DVI port. When you get an Adobe RGB screen like this, you need to color calibrate it. If not, there is really no point to get a color accurate screen. So for the type of work that I do, which is primarily photo editing, uh, editing videos, putting out YouTube videos, I need color accuracy. I want uh, what I capture with my camera. I want it to be as close as possible to what I see in real life. So for example, here is a photo taken of my sketchbook. I want to get what I see on the screen to be as close as what I see in real life. So this is pretty close. Perhaps I need to increase the brightness of the monitor slightly because it looks a bit dim compared to this. But otherwise, the colors, they are spot on. I mean, look at the clouds there versus the clouds here. I need this to be as close as possible um, to what I see in real life so that when I export this photo online, people can see what I see. That is why color accuracy is important. For print designers, you need to get your uh, color profile from your printer so that you can see the actual printout from your printer on your screen, on your color accurate screen. So um, that's why color accuracy is important. If I need to upgrade my monitor in the future, I will definitely be getting a 32 inch 4K display. But right now that uh, is beyond my budget. So that's why I got the 27 inch monitor. I think this is value for money. A lot of 27 inch monitors out there right now, those that are running 144OP, they are quite value for money at uh, this time. 4K monitors, um, it's priced slightly out of my budget currently, but um, I will definitely upgrade to one in the future, in a few years time. And when I upgrade, I will definitely consider a BenQ again because of the shading hood. Um, my table is just beside a window. Um, now when I look at this, I cannot live without the shading hood. This is so important to me. All right, so that's all for my review today. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to get a monitor like this for yourself, you can check out the links in the video description. And if you are using this monitor or some other Adobe RGB monitor, I would love to hear your thoughts because I'm always on the lookout for good monitors. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.